Hey everybody, Jack Coast Painting here with another tutorial and today I'm going to experiment and try out a new recipe for some Deathwing. I've got me a Primaris Aggressor here who's been upgraded with some Dark Angels bits and we're going to make him in the Deathwing. Starting out with some brown primer to build up our nice bone armor. And the first color we're going to use is Olive Flesh from Pro Acryl. This is a fairly bright color. So I don't want to blast it out too much on the brown primer there as our base coat. I want some of that brown primer to show through in the deepest details so that we have a little bit of contrast in our details. And in this recipe, I'm not doing the super high comic book contrast that you're used to seeing me do because I am going to be trying out some different techniques to get a really cool look on this guy and the bone armor is a little bit harder to do that kind of high contrast with and um, that's why I'm going with these specific paints and doing it this specific way. So the overall color is going to seem a little bit less dynamic than most of my other Space Marines but it's still going to look really really cool on the tabletop. Our next color is going to be Eye for an Ivory. This is sort of our dull ivory from Pro Acryl. And I'm going to very specifically pick out some areas on the model with this ivory. I know that right now it seems really subtle, but after we do our other techniques, having this extra step of pure ivory brightening up certain aspects of the model is going to make a difference. So mostly high angle spray here I'm focusing on like the top of his backpack the top of his shoulder pads the big flat areas on his power fists things like that just picking those out with a highlight of our ivory to brighten them up a little bit and overall it's going to make a difference even though right now it's very subtle next I'm going to paint the face on the head of our model I've got some shadow flesh and I'm just gonna spray down a nice base coat with our shadow flesh on the area of his face. Uh, for anybody doing helmets and things like that, you don't need to worry about this step, but I know that some people like to use these more dark angel aesthetic heads with the hooded heads on there, or just like a regular sergeant head where you're showing his character off, stuff like that. I'm gonna highlight the shadow flesh with some tan flesh, creates a really nice easy face flesh tone that we're gonna shade over in the uh, shade step. That's all we gotta do, just two colors. For our greens, I'm gonna mix our regular green and some coal black in about a four to one ratio with our green because if you use black to darken down your paint colors, you have to be very careful to only use a very small amount or else it will overpower the color entirely and it'll just be black paint. And we're going to use this uh, Dark Angels green, this black green color that I've mixed up to paint in uh, like the hood and some of the symbols and little accessories on his armor. So I'm going to do the chest eagle in green because that's the typical Deathwing look. So if I look up, you know, the box art of some Deathwing from the Codex or whatever, they show the chest eagles being a nice dark angels green color so I'm just gonna pick out some of those details and base those out in our black green after that I'm gonna pull out some burnt red this is gonna be our red base tone for the other symbols and accessories so i'm going to be doing his chest uh little rope thing <laughs> i don't know what these are supposed to be called like little rope bits uh on his chest there i'm also going to be doing his uh, shoulder pad emblems and some other stuff to kind of mix up those dark angels colors i don't want to have too much on the model with these green and red colors i just want to accent some of the symbols and little pieces there so that we don't get too much red and green on the model because if you have too much red and green it can look kind of like a Christmassy type colors and I'm not a huge fan of that so I like to stay with uh, darker more muted colors when I do Dark Angel stuff to avoid those Christmassy 
uh, colored palettes that is a trap you can fall into when painting Dark Angels. For our metallic bits, I'm going to use dark silver. This is a nice dark gunmetal silver color. Uh, some of the emblems on the Deathwing are in a silver color, so I'm going to do a couple of those. And then anything on the model that you want to be metallic for like the guns and the ammo feeds and joints and stuff like that, I'm going to use this dark silver on. Super, super easy on that aspect of it. I'm just going to base in those details, being careful not to splash any of our silver paint on our bone colored armor so that way i don't have to worry about cleanup later on and making its triumphant return to the videos is necro gold gone but not forgotten i still use this in almost all of my gold workups so we're going to base out any kind of gold emblems or little trinkets and stuff on his armor with necro gold and i will also be doing the uh, shells in his little ammo hoppers on his backpack to uh, pick those out as brass casings for the uh, bolter shells and things like that. Still love this paint, still my favorite gold, probably never going to give it up. And if you haven't picked it up yet, uh, I highly recommend picking up Necro Gold. It's the best gold I have ever used in my very long experience of painting models. After that's blocked in, I'm going to get our cold black again, and I'm going to snip up a little piece of pluck foam, tear it up a little bit, and we're going to do some paint chipping. Part of the idea of this recipe is to have these guys table ready really fast without going in and doing a whole lot of detail work. So I want to go ahead and do some paint chipping and slight weathering on his armor to give them some character before I do the wash. So the wash also weathers and shades our paint chips to make it look more realistic and a little bit more lived in. So be careful with this. You want to just dab your sponge in the paint and then get most of that paint off of there and then very lightly touch it to the model to create those little tiny paint chips. And now we're going to get into our shade. We're using the Mr. Weathering Color Stain Brown and Multi Black and the tech here is what I call dirty brush, clean brush. I've got my larger brush here, and I'm gonna dip that into our Mr. Weathering solvent. It's an oil-based solvent that dilutes and cleans up the oil wash itself. And I'm gonna paint that all over the model, get it nice and slippery, and then I will take that same big, large brush and dip that into our Mr. Weathering oil wash and kind of slather that all over the model. And the layer of solvent that we've put on will help it sort of slip and slide into the details and not stain and dry as fast. And then I take a smaller brush, which is the clean brush in this equation, and then I dip that into our solvent and I use that to clean up and blend the oil wash all over the model. I've left this entire thing in the video just sped up a little bit so you can see the whole process. And you can see that I focus areas where I want to have our bone color be the brightest and then blend that back into the shadows and details using my little dry, uh, clean brush here. If you want to use Q-tips or paper towels to help out with this process, you can do that too. Just be careful with certain types of Q-tips because they can leave fibers kind of left stuck to the model, so you got to be watchful of those. One trick I've learned while exploring this Mr. Weathering system is if you take your clean brush and dip it into your solvent and then touch that to a piece of paper towel to wick away all the excess liquid, you can use that brush as sort of an eraser tool to very easily blend and clean up areas that you want to, uh, well, blend and clean up on the model to brighten those areas and get some of that stain off of there. 
And here he is, he's all dried up and glued together. Uh, I decided that I'm pretty happy with this. This is a table ready model that checks off a lot of paint boxes at a tournament or event. And I don't have to do any extra work other than sticking them on a base. So I think this recipe is a success. If you want to do more work, you definitely can go in there and pick out more details, but I'm pretty happy with this the way it is. Hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I'll catch you next time.